They used up the bullets and headed home. A few phone calls and a trip to the liquor store later, Will was helping Lance hang his art on the walls. Friends began to show. I gotta realize the commerce potential, Lance said. The pinnacle. I gotta barter this shit. For now, I'll take money. If you can let it go, Will said, that's the hard part. You may never see it again. It may end up in someone's attic. They might not appreciate it. As long as I can eat and drink, my boy, I ain't attached. That evening, a businessman bought a still of the revolver and fruit, the mouth of the barrel only visible through green transparency of a grape, the membrane. His brush was steady as his shot, Lance, who wore thick prescription glasses. The body of the gun was hidden in a different spot from both the cartridge and the bullets in Lance's bedroom. His concern was not simply having the Glock used against him by a trespasser. There have been times I was down and held it to my temple, Lance told him, figuring about a depression I won't have the energy to put the parts together. Will would not own a gun. He was young and seemed to have everything and nothing going on for him. His moment not in the spotlight, but in the light. Even the darkest night his feast or famine. But all to excess in a beautiful not to endure way like a rainbow. In a beautiful not to endure way like a life. It was enough that he strived to be insensitive. Not because he did not want to feel. But because the rush, the intensity of feeling, might end his life early. The sun would rise and the day betray the darkest secrets of the night. He would blink in waking, on his back, and wonder what happened, and understand only that his body was the great fatigue which followed the great pleasure, and moments later, fully awake, it would be apparent, another wet dream, and he would know he had no need for a gun. He could die in vivid sleep. That redhead Bella dragged Will out nights to dance every couple of weeks, and in the day they got high together on the quilt on his bed and walked to the old Logan Beach Cafe only a few blocks away and miles from a beach for huevos rancheros and coffee then walked back and admired the facades of -of turn-of-the-century homes with turrets and stained glass. She spoke of excavating her kitchen floor, vinyl over vinyl over vinyl. They laughed about the doors they stole out of an antique shop alley and rolled back to her apartment in a shopping cart. She had a nice laugh. They returned to his place and made out, but did not make love, and she had her mango paleta for dessert. He, his horchata. The best summer afternoons were about storms coming over the city, and he would open all the windows and lie on the bed, and the light would recede slowly in hours longer than the hymn of the breeze that rose to a wind that carried velvet sheets of rain. And she would rest her head on his chest as he drifted in and out of consciousness. And together they would fall away and meet up again or miss each other and watch the other sleep for a few peaceful moments. As a continuum it was meditative They sometimes lay for 12 hours like this. The phone would ring and nobody would answer. The radio, a room away, pissed classical in time. And time was clear and the piss was sparkling and the two went well together. So there was no reason to flush.